Anybody? Brace is Dr. Yasna. I need backup. Brace, come in. I have a... I'm showing disturbing symptoms. A brain fog, severe pain in the frontal lobe. Confusion. glance there are no serious injuries and yeah I'm quite concerned I don't even know how I got here oh well, here is backup needed I repeat do you hear me work for a moment, but now there's only silence. I have two solid hectobars in the tank. That's enough for several hours. Damn it, I've lost my beacon. Where is it? Like I thought, nothing. <laughs> I'm on my own. The beacon can't be detected either. There weren't many supplies, which would suggest a quick recce. Or was it just the end of the mission? See if the past me hasn't failed the present me. And let's hope she took notes. Are we on Regis 3? Doesn't ring any bells. And my crew have no way to tell me. So I report that I have no recollection of this planet. The last thing I remember. Hang on. We've closed the research cycle. We, we were already in hibernation. Flying back. Is my blackout a side effect of metabolic depression? For some reason, our crew split into two groups. The first one set up camp. I wonder if I was with them. Or am I on my way there? Both groups landed in the same place. We took two landers to the surface. They usually do this. Maybe the first one broke. The first group explored the ocean with no biologist. It's weird. And the other one, just me, took a different route. Leading to... I was heading straight to the camp. He 
must be somewhere near. I can't just wait here. I just need to get a sense of my surroundings. Landmarks. Well done, past me. <laughs> you didn't disappoint after all. Oh, I sound like... I need to stop doing this. An object I called Needle. That rope. I, I think it's mine. I'll try to retrieve it later. It might come in handy. resembles the eye of a needle. We have the first one. I need one more. Hey, crocodile. Where are you? Huh. Another object. Still not a match. Done indeed. I report that I have established my position. Time to hit the road. Canyon, which doesn't make it easy to navigate. I hope the data's trustworthy and you're close by. see our ship. You're not leaving without me, are you? on the tracker. I assume it's no one from the crew, so perhaps it's my beacon.
I know I'm in a hurry, but I should check this place first. allow the biosynosis to fall. It won't be easy to replenish drinking supplies. Not without tests. Filtration, as we all remember. Third rule. awake. Good. My body might be awake, but my brain is still in the fridge. I wouldn't be so sure, my dear. Clearly your sense of humor was first awake. Now, try to get up, slowly. Dr. Gorski doesn't look so well. How are you holding up, Gorski? Don't get up just yet. Is it really so hard for you to remember a couple of simple rules? I have to stretch my legs. They're numb. Hibernation will do that. Just sit for a while. Here, take it and remember the third rule. Yes, I know. Stay hydrated. In small sips. the first one to get up. I don't know how you do it, Murray. It's a matter of habit. After so many cycles of cryogenic sleep, one either gets used to it or becomes a tortoise. <sighs> Koval, will you help me here? Sure, I'm coming. This is not our system. Has anyone noticed we're in the wrong place? Koval, it's not a good time. Yes, now look for yourself. This is not the right planet. You shouldn't be walking yet. Koval, could you stop it? I'm telling you, we woke up in the wrong place. Yes, we heard you. Enough of this, Yasna. Crew. Astrogator. Debating chamber in 15 minutes. But first, here, hold on to it and remember.
I found it. Look for me on your trackers. to go.
to overthink it. I found a way out of the valley, leading more or less towards the camp. this way. No point in going back this way. This area is volcanically active. Ash outbursts and extreme temperature changes may explain the extinction of local fauna and flora. But it's all just too idyllic. There's no dust in the air. The sky is clear and the soil looks like laterite to me. Perhaps not highly fertile, but not entirely barren.
400 meters in a straight line. I, I see you. Can you hear me? Need to get down from here. I can't get down this way, but I can secure the rope. As me, so be it. This suit will hold. <sighs> Here the ground slopes a little more gently, which doesn't mean it's completely flat. I want to see you as soon as possible. I'll take your chance. much closer to my destination. I must have walked for some time. But I don't remember it. Did, did I black out again? Put closer to the camp. Find a place to land. I need to get back to Dragonfly as soon as possible. Go to the infirmary and do a full set of tests on myself.
I remember you, Regis Third Satellite. Astrogator, sir, crew? Dr. Gorski, right on time. Any updates? We have a set of data from the near surface probe. How's the activity? Zero, zero, and two. So, less than nothing. Atmosphere? Nitrogen, 78%. Argon, 2%. Carbon dioxide, zero. Methane, 4%. The rest is oxygen. Uh, wait, that's 16%. With oxygen concentration as such, there should be life. At least some microbes. And yet we have detected no traces. Yeah, we'll get to that later. Let's finish with the probe readings first. Air radioactivity? It's virtually zero. In the words of paradise, no radioactivity, no endospores, no bacteria, no mold, no viruses, nothing. Just the oxygen. If there were no living organisms on the continent, there shouldn't be this much of it. What if life develops on some other continents here? No, I doubt it. Insulation outside the equatorial zone is weak. You don't see how thick the polar ice caps were to. I can guarantee a minimum of five miles of ice sheet, potentially six. Mm, that's true. There's more chance of something in the ocean. Some seaweed, algae... But why didn't life migrate to the land? Could it be because of hard radiation? Mm, I don't think so. According to the probe readings, the ground activity is exceptionally low for this part of the galaxy. I wonder if some special kind of drought-intolerant evolution occurred here. Mm, that would at least explain some of the abnormalities. Mm. Anyway, we'll have to take a look under the water. First, it would be good to know what time frame we're working with. Marit, do you have the geological analyses? It's a bit too early for mature conclusions, but this planet looks old to me. Such a fossilized egg must be at least six billion years old. Besides, the sun has seen better days too. It's almost a red dwarf. Any rare resources, forms, creatures? We can't expect such detailed data, sir. Not from this distance. Yes, we would have to explore the surface. Astrogator, what exactly are we looking for? The value of this planet. For now, it may seem like the pinnacle of nonsense. But I assure you that Regis III is not without worth. With all due respect, Astrogator, I have the impression you're not telling us everything. As always, Dr. Coble, your instincts are correct. Please forgive my reticence. My goal was to maintain unimpeded research neutrality. There is indeed a very important factor of interest in this planet. The Alliance. The Alliance? The Alliance? Correct. What do they have to do with it? Well, they've sent their most powerful unit here. But to our best knowledge, Condor's traversing a distant quadrant. Oh. I'm not talking about the Condor. So, the Invincible? Good guess, Doctor. A steel behemoth with the power to produce billions of kilowatts in a split second, converting it into energy fields that no material body can penetrate, concentrating it into destructive rays as hot as stars that can reduce a mountain range to dust or evaporate an ocean, together with its crew of almost a hundred men, professionals that are neither better nor worse than us. Well, I dare to say we're better trained, Astrogator. Uh, they are, however, unquestionable masters of propaganda. I know that some accomplishments they brag about are very much far-fetched, but the capabilities of the Invincible are not subject to doubt. And we as the scientific body should sever ourselves from the emotional and symbolic facade. In other words, we cannot ignore facts just because we don't like them, Mr. Cole. All right, but where do we stand in all this? together with our, may I say, not quite as numerous staff. 
Despite our modest forces, we still have a chance to gain a critical advantage over the Alliance while avoiding confrontation. Okay, uh, and how would we do that? Simple. We leave this planet before the Invincible arrives here. Which is when, exactly? Well, they're still far away. Astrogator, please, how much time do we have to conduct safe research? Thirteen days. There's no time to lose, then. I appreciate your eagerness, Koval. Dr. Crowther, do we need full gear? Mm hmm Definitely. Also, I caution you against taking off your helmets for a prolonged duration. This amount of methane is not neutral. Breathing the local atmosphere will lead to saturation drop, and you may start showing symptoms of mild brain damage, feel stupefied. But uh, don't worry, not before an hour or even a couple of hours. I see. Dr. Gorski, will you program RT to collect samples? Of course. Marit, Krauter, please prepare for the surface. Koval, you two. You're leaving early in the morning. And what about me? You're staying on board, Doctor. But Astrogator... Uh, this is not up for debate. I need you here. As you well know, there's not much work to do for a biologist on Regis Three, if any. Well, if I was ordered to stay, what the hell am I doing here? in the field. This is Dr. Yasna reporting. Do you copy? I'm entering the campgrounds. Androbot. Androbot. Androbot, guide me to the nearest crew member. Androbot, guide to people. Androbot, locate human. Damn! Hey! Anybody out there? Dr. Yasna! Krauter was correct. Life on Regis hasn't left the water. Koval also. He, he said something about it. Dragonfly, come in. Uh, hello, Regis. Dragonfly here. Dr. Yasna at the radio. Uh, Novik, is his leg still bothering him? Yes. He's been resting in his quarters. We're setting up on the shoreline. It's late, but we still have time to examine the ocean floor. Uh, Gorski is preparing the probe for launch. We'll start the search soon. Oh, um, one more thing, Yasna. Yes? It's beautiful here. The ocean, wind, sand. 
my suit is pitching and cramping just at the mere sight. <laughs> <laughs> Should I include this in my reports? I'm serious. I don't know about you, but over the years I've learned to hate the void. We do everything to go further, see more, take mankind one step closer to omnipotence, and then we can't even take a walk on land. As if enjoying everything that's around us was almost a... I understand how you feel, Koval. After all these years, I miss home too. Is it that obvious? come across as, well, erudite, but at the end of the day, it's simple bombing that speaks through me. Well, a little obvious. We have to examine the composition of the ocean, Doctor. Collect the mineral samples. Yes. Koval, That's where right. are you going? Do you want to do the honours? Over. Gladly. For a little, um, uh, a quick recce. Probe in the water. I'm switching to manual. I'm going to take a look around. All right, Koval. I'll allow you Distance. to come this recce of yours. Copy that. Thank you. You're not too soft on him, yes, no. Three hundred. I know, I know. Five hundred. Damn me. Am I seeing this right? Dr. Crowther, would you please have a look here? Of course. Just a second. It's like... Koval, did uh, you hear that? school of fish. They found something. Is, uh, is I'm coming. It's hard to speak of normality here, but animals are usually not afraid of equipment or, or anything they haven't seen before. Are you saying they've already seen probes? I've no idea, but their behavior suggests some sort of defense mechanism. I catch at least one for examination, then I'll be able to say more. Come here. One more time. Got it. What did you do? I had to electrocute him. Wouldn't have caught it otherwise. I'm taking the specimen ashore. That's a fine one. There'll be plenty to dissect, Yasna. <laughs> Dr. Gorski, have you made changes to the Androbot's algorithms <laughs> without telling anyone? <laughs> Again. Ah, oh, well. Never mind. Hello? Anyone here? Marit! It's Yasna! I, I came for you! I've located Dr. Crowther. He's in bad shape. I'm going to examine him now. Excuse me. Yes, can you hear me? Astrogator. I've been listening to you for two hours now. My receiver is dead. No need to explain yourself, Doctor. I know everything. 
The transmitter was still working, so I heard your reports. Glad you didn't lose your head. Wait, please. I need to reconnect. Testing. One, two, three. Ah, copy you, Doctor. Now I'm clear, but to the point. As I understand it, there's only Doctor Crowther at the camp. And he's not well. What happened to him? I... I was just about to examine him. Dr. Crowther, please don't be startled. I need to take your hand. Temperature normal. Pulse too. O2 saturation is fine. There's nothing physically wrong with the doctor. His pupils respond properly. Look at my finger. No delay in reactions. Yet no response to verbal communication. None. Conclusions, Doctor. Uh, Akinesia, mutism, impoverishment of mimic movements, and reaction to stimuli. These are all symptoms of stupor. But it's difficult to pinpoint the cause of the disorder. We need to quickly perform a complete set of tests and focal plane tomography of his brain. Otherwise, I won't be able to say anything more. I'll prepare the infirmary. But first things first, Lander. We need to get you all on board. Couldn't we just evacuate him right away? If it were that easy, I would have sent the hopper long ago. Please look for the mission log. It should include crucial data about the crew's activities. We have three more people to find. And you still need to designate a place for the landing. log but it will do dr crowter kept records meticulous as always what's in there hmm. dr gorski has moved away from the research sector to the west ah that's right you followed those deposits of metal the most important thing is probably the landing coordinates ba 2316 noting Excellent. I'm uploading the data. Starting calibration. Are you looking for the detector? Yeah, just a sec. Got it. Please make sure it works. I don't understand why it wouldn't. It's a rather reliable piece of equipment. Like everything around at all. Okay. Checked. I'm leaving the tent. All right. Now for the robot. It's unresponsive. Yes, I know. I'm currently trying to establish a connection. Can I help somehow? You must look for the others, Doctor. I'll take care of this myself. Get the tin head back on its feet remotely. And secure Crowther. I have everything I need. Just... Is something wrong with the connection, sir? It's not working. I'm not sure why. There's a relay transmitter in the camp, so the signal should be strong enough. A relay? Huh. Yasna, what are you up to? One sec. I'm looking for it. What about the rest of the crew? You're gonna make them wait? If the Androbot isn't working properly, I can't just leave Krauter like this. He might hurt himself. Uh, fine. Proceed as you deem fit.
I've got bad news. Our signal is far too weak to restart the Andrew Bot. The relay malfunction? Not exactly. It's completely fried. I don't think a sandstorm could cause such damage. Well, that's irrelevant now, Doctor. There must be a spare somewhere in the camp. Please search for it. the extra relay. Excellent. The signal should be back as soon as it's turned on. Receiving instructions. Ugh. I don't know if the Androbot should already be doing something. Is it still frozen? Yes. Unfortunately. Hmm. A positronic brain has correct readings. Receptors. Hmm. Should be walking now. Does he? His positional data hasn't changed. <laughs> well, you can see that he really wants to go, but still can't. Uh, please check his legs. Hmm. Could be the server motor. Ah, that's it. Gosh, you tin bastard. Uh, thank you, Doctor. I won't hold you any longer. Go find the others while I finish here. That's an order. Yes, sir. 